Resilient. If you look that word up in the dictionary, a couple of definitions will stick out. Springing back or recovering from adversity. Yesterday's Bedlam game in Norman was the Sooners had a strong second half and showing their resiliency in a 38-20 win um, really made an emphasis on that word, resilient. After the game, Fox interviewed uh, Bob Stoop during the Big 12 Trophy presentation. question was asked to Bob after the rough start in September, which the team lost two of their first three, didn't know what direction the team was going to go. The team won nine straight, including the Big 12 championship. How did it all happen? And Bob Stoop said, just very resilient. And that's really the case of the season and of yesterday, kind of kind of microcosm, if you will. Because remember, in September, it, it didn't look all that great. And after the one and two start, including getting humiliated by the Buckeyes, uh, you didn't really know what direction the Sooners were, were going to go. And, you know, even the most optimistic Sooner fan may not have thought of winning your next nine consecutive, going 9-0 and in the Big 12. Even though it's not one of the greatest conferences we've seen this season, still a major conference. Still going 9-0 would, would be some trick. Well, we know one thing about Bob Stoops. Um, he's been able to execute many tricks and make them genuine. And if you were to look at his accomplishments in college football in terms of coaching, um, one sheet of paper wouldn't be enough. You need a notebook of accomplishments to support that. And you know, so they overcome the bad start this season, and they overcame – um, not uh, too great of a first half, in all honesty. You know, when at one point you're down 17 to 10, you have no ground game. And really, the only guy giving you, you know, big stat production, D.D. Westbrook, got knocked out in the game on a, on a, on a clean but solid hit by uh, Jordan Stearns. And, you know, we don't see Westbrook for the rest of the game. And as a Sooner fan, yeah, that, that sinking feeling that, that, uh, you know, that, that trying to pull off a victory today wasn't going to be all that easy. In fact, at, at times it, uh, what well, kind of bleak because of the, of the way the game was going. The fact that, again, the Sooner running attack was in quicksand and that your your best passing uh, target was going to be out for the remainder of the game. But the Sooners would overcome. We'll get into that later. But like I said, yesterday was a, was very indicative of how the season has gone in terms of not getting off to the best of starts, but finding a way to um, atone for it and – come out in the end on top. And that's what the Sooners did. Um, if you watch the game, you know that, that weather was somewhat of a factor because even though it wasn't a torrential downpour, even though you didn't have snow or ice or freezing rain, it was cold rain. And it was just a day where you, know, you, you may not have been the most comfortable outside. And of course, you're dealing with enough rain to where um, trying to hold on to the ball was not going to be easy. And that's one thing about this game. I do commend both teams. There was only one turnover believe it or not, in the game. Just one. That's it. Even though there were some drops, even though there were fumbles, but as far as actual turnovers, only one in the game. That was the P. Ryan fumble early in the fourth quarter, which we'll get into later. Um, but to me, it seemed like Oklahoma, um, Baker Mayfield, the difference of the two quarterbacks, you didn't see Mayfield have as much struggle um, as far as executing, as far as throwing, as far as moving the offense in terms of the passing attack. Um you no, know, Mayfield went 13 of 19, and you know some of those incompletions were drops. I thought he handled uh, the wet weather better than what um, than what Mason Rudolph did. And you know, Rudolph had at least a couple of um, a couple of issues, you know, trying to get the snap. And I think part of that probably had to do um, with the wet stuff. Okay, including early on when the Cowboys looked like they were going to get the first uh, touchdown of the game, and it wasn't to be because of a fumble. And you can't tell me that the moisture, even though it wasn't like I said a torrential downpour. Um, you can't tell me that moisture didn't have somewhat of a factor on the game because it looks like from the Oklahoma State side, it probably affected them more than it did Oklahoma um, at the end result. Uh, but in the beginning, the results of Oklahoma's ground attack were nothing. They couldn't run the ball at all. Oklahoma State committed the linebackers more uh, to the run than I think Oklahoma was anticipating. And the defensive line for the Cowboys played well in the early going. And you didn't have Mixon getting those big runs. In fact, he was stalemated quite a bit at the line of scrimmage, and at the same time, so was P. Ryan. So OU was faced with third and down, uh, third down and long um, too many times, and, of course, and that would lead to punts. Um, the Sooners, remember, against West Virginia two weeks before, 21 points in the first 13 minutes of the game. First 13 minutes of this game, no points and only one first down. Quite a contrast. But, again, the Sooners, as we find out in the second half, did not give up on the ground attack. They made adjustments. 
and they turned it around in terms of the running game. Um, as far as the defense for Oklahoma, I thought they played real well. Okay, I thought they played, but they played pretty good. Um, they had to take some of Oklahoma State's best shots, and um, it was not the passing attack by Mason Rudolph and the and the, and the pokes that was making the difference. It was the running game uh, with Justice Hill, um, who almost had 100 yards in the game, although most of those rushing yards came in the first half. And Chris Carson, who um, I thought played a real good game, had over seven yards per carry for the Cowboys. Um, one of the key moments in the game, I thought, was early when Oklahoma State again looked like they were going to get the game's first touchdown. They got second and goal from the seven. Justice Hill finds a hole over the right side. Looks like he's going to get into the end zone. Ahmad Thomas, from his safety spot, uh, makes a big play in standing up Hill, turning him around, and getting help from his teammates, thus not allowing Hill to break the plane of the goal. Made it third down. And that was a play where Rudolph fumbled. He did recover, but it set up fourth down about two. And something we've discovered throughout this game, Mike Gundy was just way too conservative on his play calling, decided to go for the field goal. I know you're trying to get early points, but you have to think at some point Oklahoma is going to get going offensively. You need every point you can get. It's the Big 12 championship. Probably um, when you, when you, even at the time, I think Oklahoma State fans were thinking, you know, what are you doing? We're trying to win a Big 12 championship. We need touchdowns. You don't get it, so be it. You got them pinned deep in their own territory. Three points you had a feeling on a drive like that where you're so close was not going to be sufficient, but they settled for three. Um, there were some times where you know you really had to scratch your head as a Cowboy fan over the conservative play calling of uh, Mike Gundy. But the second quarter, for the most part, was a disaster for the Sooners. Again, the Westbrook injury when they're up 10-3, to three, um, and I, I didn't think there was anything wrong with the hit that Jordan Stern supplied on Westbrook. Didn't leave the crown of hell. I mean, football's a violent game, and um, you know Stern's just doing the best that he can to be there to make the play. He did, and the fact that, that Westbrook got knocked out of the game, that, that's something that sometimes you can't control. But it was a clean hit. Unfortunately for the Sooners at that point, you really didn't know what direction the game was going to go because the Cowboys, the next few minutes, were able to get some nice drives going again. The ground game was a big reason. And with under two minutes to go before halftime, all the momentum was on Pistol Pete's side as OSU was up 17-10. And for the Sooners, they know they don't have a ground game. It's not going. You don't have Westbrook. So what do you do? You rely on Baker Mayfield to lead the team. And that's exactly what he did. And again, this is a big reason why, you know, he, along with D.D. Westbrook, are Heisman Trophy candidates. Give credit to Jeffrey Mead. Only had one catch, but it was a big catch. 42-yard uh, reception. And that would get Oklahoma into Oklahoma State territory. And even though there was so little time left to go before halftime, Mayfield and company pulled it together. They picked up the slack for the injured Westbrook. You mentioned the catch by Meade. Also, Geno Lewis with the touchdown reception just before halftime. And that momentum that Oklahoma State had built up the seven or eight minutes prior to that and taking that 17 to 10 lead, a lot of that momentum was dissipated as OU got that. Game time touchdown right at halftime. So despite the fact the Sooners were just really one-dimensional, only able to throw effectively and not run, um, had to feel a little bit vindicated because it was a tie game when you have a feeling Oklahoma State left points on the board. And then early second half, that's when the ground attack changed for the better for the Crimson and Cream. So Maje P. Ryan with the huge run, 67-yard run, more yards rushing on that play by P. Ryan than the entire Oklahoma team had net rushing-wise in the first half, which was only 60. And, you know, OU was a benefit of a penalty, too, because remember, third and goal, Mayfield um, gets base masked. That right there led to an automatic first down, and eventually uh, P. Ryan would punch it in, and OU would retake the lead and would never relinquish it. Um, so one big reason why OU won this game was because they did not feel sorry for themselves. They didn't get down after the second quarter Westbrook injury. And they atoned for it with contributions, like I said, from Meade, from Lewis. Also, Jordan Smallwood had a couple of catches as well. The Dimitri Flowers reception, only reception he had, but it was for 67 yards. That was vital as well. So you have you know, teammates of Westbrook that did their part in making sure that the Sooners were not going to lose this game. In the final de facto Big 12 championship game, in other words, the final Big 12 championship played on a campus site, OU is going to make sure that the second largest crowd in Sooner history, just over 85,500, were going to see the Sooners win the championship at home. Remember, Bob Stoops, now 9-1 and one 
in games where the Big 12 championship is on the line. One incredible statistic. The last really gas pope you would say that Oklahoma State had was early in the fourth quarter when the Sooners were leading by 11, um, and P. Ryan had the ball dislodged. OSU recovers, and then P. Ryan, unfortunately, had to go to the locker room as well. He was banged up. This brought back shades of two years ago when OU had a two-touchdown lead in the second half, fumbled, and then the momentum of the game changed, and OSU would eventually tie and then win in overtime. And I'm sure o- OU fans and OSU fans, for that matter, were maybe getting deja vu thinking it could happen again because Oklahoma State, largely in the second half, didn't have momentum at all. But that one fumble recovery down 11 – um, maybe you know Oklahoma State thinks, okay, this is going to be the spark we need. And they marched the ball uh, very well. Um, but fourth and two decision for Gundy near the Oklahoma 20. Do you go for it? He decides to kick the field goal, and Ben Grogan misses it. He hooks it, and you had a feeling that was a huge deflator. We know this because the next play, Joe Mixon, who was held to 20 yards rushing at that point, it's kind of funny in football, Sometimes it takes just one big play, one play, and that's all people remember. Mixon, 79 yards later, gives Oklahoma a 38-20 lead, an electrifying long touchdown run, and Joe Mixon on the day finishes just a yard shy of uh, 100 yards rushing, as did uh, Justice Hill. But the big thing for the Sooners, the second half, the ground game clicked. They ended up with about 281 yards rushing in the second half. Um, over 200 of it came from, of course, Samaj P. Ryan, who did re-enter the game, by the way, late. Oh, you had a chance to run up the score, but did the classic thing by taking a knee just shy of the goal line um, in the final minute. But for the game, the Sooners ended up with over 600 uh, yards of total offense, 629 to be more exact, and ended up with 341 yards on the ground. Baker Mayfield, sensational, um, even though he didn't throw the ball a lot. Um, ground game really took care of things in the second half. He was 13 of 19, had three touchdowns. Passes one to Westbrook, um, of course one to Lewis, and he had one to uh, Mixon. And for Mason Rudolph, it was a frustrating day. Of course, the center defense was a big part of that. And again, give credit um, also to, um, to uh, Jordan Evans, another terrific game for him, and also to Obo putting pressure on Rudolph. And you know, Rudolph just throwing wise was just never really got into a rhythm as he threw 25 passes and uh, only completed 11 of them. So one of the worst games that um, Mason Rudolph. Has a play. So, what now for the Sooners? Again, you go undefeated in Big 12 play, you get rewarded by going to a major bowl. The Sugar Bowl, January 2nd, it looks like you're going to be playing the Auburn Tigers. I can't tell you the last time Oklahoma and Auburn played. I've been watching Sooner football for 35 years, and I don't ever recall during that span the Sooners and Tigers ever crossing paths. So, no question, um, the Sooners earn this. They're going to try to win their 11th game of the year in the year on a very high note. And by the way, if you haven't seen no use recruiting classes, one of the tops in the country right now, they've already got 21 uh, commitments. So the future looks good. And the future, I think, looks good for Oklahoma State as well. It looks like, based upon who's coming back next year, Oklahoma and Oklahoma State are going to be the top two teams next year um, in the Big 12. That will really be confirmed if Mason Rudolph decides to come back for his senior year. We already know that Baker Mayfield, after yesterday, made it official. He's coming back for his uh, senior year. Um, so we'll see if Rudolph of Oklahoma State does the same. OSU um, looks like they're going to get a nice bowl as well, the Alamo Bowl, and uh, they'll play a team out of the Pac-12 Conference. Congrats to Oklahoma. It's not the college football playoff, by the way, if you're curious. Alabama, number one. Clemson, number two. Ohio State, number three. And by the way, um, to Ohio State, and of course, you kicked Oklahoma's tail back in September. Oklahoma has one thing to say to you. You're welcome <laughs> for getting into the college football playoff. I, I, in my opinion, um, o- Ohio State's win over OU was one of the big factors in the Buckeyes and not Penn State making the college football playoff out of the Big Ten, even though I know Penn State won the league and beat Ohio State head to head. Ohio State won three games this year over um, 10 win teams. Of course, Michigan, Wisconsin, and Big 12 champ Oklahoma. The committee, I think, weighed that more than the conference title from the Big Ten. And Washington, by the way, rounds it out, uh, finishing at number four. OU won't be going to the playoff, but they'll still be going to a pretty good bowl game, and they'll have a chance to end the season on a 10-game winning streak, but they'll have to beat Auburn, it would appear, uh, to do that. 
Congrats to Bob Stoops. Congratulations to um, Oklahoma. Again, Bob Stoops, 14 and 4 now against Oklahoma State, 10 and 2 against Mike Gundy. And Oklahoma's 10th Big 12 football championship, that's seven more, by the way, than the next highest team, which is Texas with three Big 12 titles. Sooners continue their winning ways over Oklahoma State with a strong second half and again being very resilient. 38 to 20 over the Cowboys. Congrats, Oklahoma. We'll have another show coming up soon. Boosterner.